In this tutorial, I'll guide you through two things. First, how to browse the dimensions of your data. And second, how to make and keep and generate and destroy old and new variables. So let's take a look at the data file that we have before. So in the current setting, we've just opened the data set that we had before with the date and the depth of households to GDP. And here we can see a couple of things. On the left, you can see what commands you've used in the past. So we have just only imported our data. If you click at this thing again, it will basically re-execute the command again. So right now we have three variables. And if you were to execute this file again, what you would get is that you would open up the data set again. So just by clicking it, you immediately re-execute the command. So if you want to do something again, you don't have to type it in all the time. You can just click on the left side to execute it. Subsequently, on the top right corner, you see the, you see the variables that you actually have in play. Here we have our date variable and we have our debt to household GDP ratio. So these are the two variables that we have. In case you have a lot of variables and you'd like to find one that is in your data set, you can search part of a variable and then subsequently find it. As I've shown, it's not just that it starts with that thing, it just needs to contain that specific aspect. So here we just have to date. Remember, don't click the variables thing. You'll actually remove the whole panel, which is difficult to get back. Just press delete and you'll see all of your variables again. And here below, you see more details on your variable. You basically see how the thing is sorted that we'll dive into later and what the size of this thing is. So the number of variables, the number of observations and the amount of in-memory use that the file has. And all of these things are quite important. The larger your data set, the more computing power you need to open it, to run it, and to do stuff with it. So you want to usually keep this as small as possible. The larger your data set gets, either number of observations or in variables determines this thing. Now, if you'd like to get more of a feel of how your data looks like, what you can do is click on the button here, Data Editor Browse. That would basically show you all of the data that you have. So you'll here have basically the information that is in the data set. There's 72 rows and two columns. Is these 72 rows consider the household debt to GDP ratio from 2005 in a quarterly format until 2022 July. In this instance, we've now looked at our data. So assume that we'd like to make a new variable. Say that we'd like to make a variable that is the same as a previous variable, but we'd like to later on change the thing, that the GDP ratio. But we now have it, as we've just saw before, in percentage points, but we'd like to get it as a ratio. So we'd like to get this variable divided by 100. How we would do that is by using the generate command, gen. This command basically makes a new variable for you. It would be something like generate household debt ratio, which is the name of the new variable. And you always need to put an equal sign and just one equal sign there. It says generate this variable. And then that variable should be the same as or will be something that you put behind it. So then we would have our debt to GDP household ratio, which will be debt GDP household. As this is quite annoying to type out the variable every single time, what state has done is a feature that you can just click on it and you get that value. And then you can use any math operators that you'd usually also use. So here we want to do it divided by 100. So divide by 100. And once you're done, press enter. Now you can see if we browse, which you can also do by typing or by looking at this button here, you'll have the, va the variable in a ratio. And I say that we only want to have the ratio, but not the other variable. Because remember, the larger the data set, the larger the file becomes. First, 
Now it is 994 bytes. And if we'd like to get it smaller, we can drop one of our variables. That basically means you remove it from your data set. Now we have three variables with almost a thousand in size. And then we remove our previous item. And we see that the file is suddenly a lot smaller. We go again to the browse menu. We see that the variable has been deleted. This is how you can make and generate new variable. Now you can also do this using if statements. And this is really, really, really powerful. So say that you want to make a new variable that is the same as the old variable, but only under a certain condition. Then you can do something like this. Generate new variable is the same as old variable if, and then a command comes in. So you would have to use some sort of command before that, and that will only execute if the statement that follows after that holds true. So what you could do is say, I will only want to have that variable if the, that, the household that the GDP ratio is larger than one. And what you now see is that it has generated the new variable, but it also shows you missing values generated, which means that these very, very values are not there. If you go back to the previous file, you see that there's a whole bunch of nothing, and then it only shows you the values that are in a specific value. So you can make very selective variables this way. And these if statements you can use for almost anything. And we'll use them later on throughout our tutorials. But just note, that they're incredibly powerful and incredibly useful. Thank you so much for listening, and this was the end of this tutorial.